So our first reps, what we're really, really, really gonna stress is even though you're running your trigger slowly, still having a nice, quick, snappy transition. So in other words, what that might look like, if I'm doing it really slow, is one, two, three, four, five, six. See what I'm talking about? Even though I'm squeezing the trigger slowly, bam, as soon as the second shot is gone, I'm snapping over to the next target. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, it is finally here. It's finally time for us to give a review of the Zev OZ9 and be able to tell you guys what I think about this pistol. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Billy. I'm an instructor with Spectrain. Zev did send us out this gun for our review, for our use, for us to show to you guys and to basically kick tires on it and see what we think of this pistol. And uh, so far, guys, I've had an amazing experience. We'll get into that here in a moment. First of all, I just want to talk to you a little bit about that Zev and kind of their background and kind of how this pistol came about. For those of you who don't know, I've been running Zev products for a very long time. This is my uh, Polymer 80 gun that brought a lot of you guys to this channel. I started doing some videos about Polymer 80s and I always ran Zev components on this gun. I've always had a Zev slide of some kind, Zev barrels, Zev components, Zev sights, uh, as well as Zev magwell on this gun. And so I've been very familiar with Zev for a long time and been really impressed with the quality uh, of their uh, components. Um, so Zev came out with the Zev OZ9 pistol uh, here at SHOT Show a year or two ago. And at first glance, it looks like just a modified Glock. And certainly, this does inherit a lot of the reliability and features that the Glock is known for. A lot of the parts are Glock compatible. There are no Glock parts in the gun, obviously, and there are some really key differences that I want to let you guys know about. Um, in this pistol. So what I've done is, uh, first of all, let's just kind of give you a, a rundown of what the pistol is, kind of the, the parts and the features of it, and then we'll go into kind of my experiences and, and how this gun runs and so forth. So why is it different from a Glock? Obviously, the entire upper on this gun, the entire slide, barrel, components, all that sort of stuff, is all a, Z a Glock Gen 3 compatible. So it's all Zev original parts. Um, but it is Glock compatible. So if we break this thing down really quickly, what you'll obviously notice is that this is a you know a, a highly modified act for market Zev slide. It's cut for an RMR, uh, and it is an RMR patterned optic. This is obviously an SRO. Uh, it does have slide cuts. It has a window in the top. It has the the windows in the sides. It has the Zev optimized uh, you know match grade barrel in it. Um, it's got their captured recoil spring and and you know upgraded components, things of that nature. Uh, let me mention the cut on this really, really quickly. Not all slide cuts for an optic are created equal. Um, the really cool thing that Zev does with theirs, number one, it's a very, very deep cut. So I can actually, these are the sights that come with the OZ-9. These are standard height sights. They are not suppressor height sights. And I actually can use these sights. I can see the entire fiber over the optic. Um, because that cut is so deep. They also have posts in their cut, which is really, really important for not transferring the impact of each shot to the screws. The screws don't break off like they will on a Glock MOS. Um, they also have reference marks in here as well. With Zev slides, every time I've needed to change, this is the SRO so I can change the battery from the top. But with the RMRs, obviously you have to take the optic off, change the battery, put it back on. I've never had to re-zero after doing that with the Zev slide. Um, it's always been right on the money. And so that is very, very impressive to me. It's one of the things I love about Zev slides. Now, let's get to uh, what they call the frame, or it's kind of like a chassis, as well as the grip module. I did a video already, if you guys haven't seen that, about one of the cool features of the OZ9 is the ability to swap grip modules, which I'll show you here. But I wanna do a deeper dive on kind of what the parts are and how they work together. So it's what's really, really easy, let me just take, I've got like a, a Q-tip literally here, just a wooden handle. All I've got to do is pop out one pin, and now you'll see exactly how different the OZ9 is from the Glock. So this may remind you somewhat of like a P320 from SIG, and it's similar, but it's not the same. So the, the idea behind this is that the entire uh, inner workings are contained in a metal chassis, if you will that includes this front rail. This is a fully metal pick rail, um, not polymer like you would normally get from Glock. So there's a couple really cool things about this. Number one, everything's contained. You can swap out grip modules and so forth. It has that modularity. Number two, it's really easy to do maintenance and clean. I can get to all these parts really, really easily. Additionally, there's some things that Zev's done to improve on the Glock design, such as increasing the contact area between the slide 
and these rails, right? There's there's about twice as much contact area on this rail as there is on a standard Glock, as well as increased contact area back here. That's gonna help you with your harmonics, if you will, absorbing that recoil, less vibration, all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really good feeling gun. When you rack the gun, you, know, you almost feel like you're more racking something like a 2011 versus a Glock. Additionally, what all this metal does is it increases the weight not in your slide, it increases the rate in your frame. Obviously, what a lot of us like to do is, is lower the weight of our slide as much as we can. That's why these window cuts are here, right? That's specifically to lower the weight of the slide. That helps the slide track faster, which especially if you're running a red dot, is something that's very cool, and you'll notice that when you're shooting. We want our frames, though, to be as heavy as possible, right? Not as heavy as possible. There's obviously a limit to where that makes sense. But in general, this frame, from my measurements, is about twice the weight of a standard Glock frame, which is going to help you with recoil control. It's going to help you with stabilization and is very, very nice, solid feeling uh, frame, if you will, on the Zebo Z9. It's very, very different. Um, from a Glock. So this is one of the key things that sets a, a OZ9 apart from a Glock and is really, really beneficial in a, in a lot of ways. So this is the, the serialized portion. Obviously, like I did, I just dropped one frame. I should have had this ready, guys. I'm sorry. Um, so this is my competition frame that I use for competition. It has a magwell removed because in carry optics, I'm not allowed to run that. So as I just showed you guys, all I have to do is drop that one pin, slap this off. Now I can grab this frame and put it on. You'll notice it's a different color, obviously, if you're in aesthetics. It has a magwell on there. And this one is a Glock 19 size frame, whereas the one that I had over here is a Glock 17 size frame. So the, what a lot of people are doing with this is saying, okay, here's my competition training duty, whatever setup where I want a full size grip. And then very, very quickly, if I want to switch over to concealed carry, I can go to a compact size grip, the same, very similar size to like a Glock 19. So that is a really incredible feature of the OZ9 that very, very few pistols out there have the ability to do. And this one is the easiest that I've found as far as dropping that one singular pin, which is very easy to do, and then you're, you're done. Zev also has, I don't have any out here, but they have conversion slides as well. So if let's say I got an OZ9 Compact, I can run 19, 17, or 34 length slides on that, as well as the Compact or full size grip modules. So you have really just a ton of modularity in the OZ9 platform. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of some of the features of the OZ9 um, that set it, set it apart. Now, one thing you guys may have noticed, I apologize. I should have swapped this back out for the video, but I'm lazy. I, um, as you guys know, I mess with my guns all the time. I can't help it. Fowler sent me out one of their triggers to play around with. The trigger that comes in the OZ9 that I found to be really amazing. Um, the the uh, our, my other, another instructor at Spectrain that has uh, the OZ9, Chris, is still running the stock trigger. I was just messing with his the other day. The stock trigger is amazing. Fowler sent me their trigger out the other day to, to play around with, and so I'm still uh, putting some rounds on that. But I ran just the stock uh, OZ9 trigger on this, and it was it was really great. So let's talk a little bit about uh, just uh, kind of my experiences with the gun, pros, cons. Why would I want to get this over a stock Glock or another performance pistol? Um, so first of all, let's just talk about performance pistols versus stock pistols because that's a, you know, a very, obviously a popular conversation. Um, I, can you get a stock Glock 19 and run it and be good to go? Of course you can. Of course you can. And I have those. I run them. They run great. Uh, and of course, you don't want to substitute budget that would go, to, go, go towards training and ammo for a high performance pistol like this. But if you have the budget and you're shooting a lot and you're at the skill set where you want to remove some of the barriers that a stock gun gives you towards higher performance, maybe you're running competition, maybe you're just a performance shooter, whatever the case may be, having a high-end performance pistol may be something that's interesting to you and it can absolutely be worth the money in my opinion. Um, now here's what I will tell you. I built this pistol from stock. Obviously this is the Polymer 80 build. I spent probably 500 more dollars and you can get an OZ9 for, uh, of course, you can use our code SPECTRAIN for 15% off on this pistol, um, which gets you down to around $1,500. Now, that may sound like a whole lot, um, but again, I won't, I'll, maybe I'll throw up a slide with the information, but I think if you, if you tried to build a pistol, you can't build this, right, because this is a proprietary, one-of-a-kind pistol. 
But if you wanted to build something like this, you're probably going to end up somewhere around $2,000 by the time you get all the parts, all the work done. You're also going to have to send it, send it to multiple different places to get work done. It's going to take you a few months, most likely. And this, I can just get off the shelf at $1,500, and it's ready to go. I don't need to modify it. I know it's going to run, and that's really cool. So why did this take so long for me to come out? Well, I've ran probably about 6,000 rounds um, through this gun since I got it back in November. Um, I, I take, I've taught classes with it, I've run matches with it, and of course I've been running it in my own personal training. Um, now, obviously your experience may vary. I have yet to have a single failure to fire or any other kind of malfunction with this pistol. Um, that's hard for me to believe. Usually, um, even running a stock Glock, I would have some failures in that amount of time. Part of the reason for that is that I've been running the Outdoor Dynamics ammo, which is just really, really good stuff and reliable. Um, and so that may be one of the reasons I haven't seen as many malfunctions as I may even see with a stock Glock. You know, you're, you're usually gonna get, when you're running cheap training ammo, you know, at least one or two failures, I would say, per thousand rounds-ish. Um, I haven't seen that with this gun. It, it has run completely flawlessly up to this time, and I've been running it really, really hard. So I'm very impressed. Now, I feel like I have to mention it because about everything I've posted about the OZ-9, someone brings up the Sean Havoc video, uh, which is really surprising to me. I've never even heard of Sean Havoc, but he posted a video uh, that was just really, really negative about the OZ-9. And for those that don't know, the OZ-9 did absolutely have an issue, a very limited run last year, uh, which they found out that, uh, I believe it was the connector, if I remember correctly, was not being stamped correctly uh, by one of their third-party manufacturers they were using for that particular part. They identified the problem, they fixed it, and they recalled all those guns and replaced them for the charge. Um, and so obviously when you see those issues, that is concerning, but I feel like I've seen those issues with just about every manufacturer out there. Glocks had bad runs, um, m and had, had bad runs. Other, other brands that are known for being really, really good brands like Surefire have had bad runs. The XC1 was the worst weapon ladder probably ever had. Um, and so that doesn't concern me because I am not just a fan of the OZ9, I'm a fan of Zev and their parts and have been for a very long time and I'm aware of their track record. Um, so I'm not super concerned about this one limited issue that they had with the OZ-9. Like I said, I've been running this one very, very heavily in a short period of time since I got it, and I've had zero issues with it whatsoever, which gives me a lot of confidence in the OZ-9. Uh, as well, everyone else that I've talked to that really shoots a lot, is a real shooter, and runs these guns pretty hard and heavy, has had zero issues with them. I was fortunate enough to meet Casey Eusebio um, at, uh, at SHOT Show, talk to him about the gun. Uh, other instructors at Spectrum have been running them other guys that I know, and all the feedback I've gotten on the gun has been overwhelmingly positive. So that to me is a big vote of confidence in the OZ-9. I absolutely love this pistol. There it is. <laughs> there it is, guys. Uh, you guys know that I'm a big customizer. I tweak my guns, I play around with them. I really enjoy building a fully custom gun. But if that's not your thing and you just wanna get a gun that's 100% ready to go, it's gonna save you money, it's gonna save you time, and you can get a fully, you know, just specced out performance pistol right off the shelf. And maybe you like those features of the modularity and being able to change grip modules, all that sort of thing. Uh, this is exactly where you should be looking. Um, the only other con that I've really seen from it, what I don't like personally, and I haven't modified this one yet, I want to show you. The only modification I've done to this pistol, other than putting the optic on, and like I said, I changed this trigger out because I'm Fowler wanted me to play around with it. Um, is this beaver tail is bigger than I like. Now that's not a con, some people really, really wanted that. Um, and what that's for is basically to eliminate slide bite, right? I can slide my hand up there and there's no way for me to get the meaty part of my hand up in the way of the slide where it would cut my hand. However, for me, when I draw, I use kind of a C-clamp grip, right? This is kind of my grip on the gun when I draw, especially from concealment. And this beaver tail blocks me from being able to do that. It really, it really gets in the way. So you can see the difference. Um, basically what I did, guys, is I just shaved that down a little bit with a Dremel. Hopefully you can see the difference in kind of the geometry there. Basically I just flattened the curve out on the back of that beaver tail and that completely solved all the issues for me. That's the only modification that I've done to this gun. Um, and other than that, it has run flawlessly. It's been a really great experience and um, I am thrilled with the Zevo Z9. So hopefully that helps you guys. Um, if you guys have any other questions about it, feel free to let me know. Um, 
but it's definitely got my vote of confidence and, and my support. If you're if you're looking at getting an OZ9, I'd say go for it. Um, and that's that's it, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.